Hi, Junior Gold Bowlers. This is Del Warren here at Kegel Training Center. And today's topic is really getting ready for Junior Gold and to do some things that you could do to prepare for the competition. So ultimately you have the best experience and the highest score possible, your, your best results. So some of these things are pretty obvious, but I'd like to go over it. Um, we teach this in our camps and also to uh, the bowlers that frequently train here at the Kegel Training Center. So I would say um, one of the, the things, one of the items that is really overlooked are the approaches today. And because you're gonna be bowling in multiple centers and we know that the centers are all different and you're also gonna be bowling in the summertime, um, when it comes to your bowling shoes, um, there's, if you're a competitive bowler, you obviously have a brand of shoes where you can change your heels um, and your soles uh, to accommodate the friction on the approaches. Um, so I would make sure that you go through your heel and sole inventory to make sure that you have all the possible combinations covered from a red heel, red sole, if the, if the approaches are really slick, or, or I'm sorry, sticky, all the way up to if the approaches are super slick. Um, so many times people lose that bag that come with their shoes or they never change the bottom of their soles and then when the, when the approaches are a little bit different, um, it really messes up their, their timing, their rhythm, and certainly their release. So pay attention to that. And, and, and when you get to the practice session, um, that's, that would be the first thing that I would do. As a matter of fact, if you get to the, the town or the city early enough, I would go around to your different venues and just spend an hour in the venue um, dialing in your heels and soles. I think that would be a great, uh, um, it would be worth your time to do that. The second thing, um, obviously, is to make sure that when you're going to change your surfaces on your balls, you have a new set of Aberlon pads or some sort of um, whatever uh, type of product that you're using to change the surface of your balls. You have all the way from 360, 500, 1000, 2000, 3, 4, and polish um, because you're going to need to dial in your surfaces. Remember, Junior Gold is a limited ball situation, and if you make a long run in the tournament and you get, um, you're, you're, you get to the point where you can actually win or make TV, you're going to see several different combination of oil patterns and situations, and you're going to need to be able to change those surfaces and dial that in. So again, so many times we go to tournaments where these are completely worn out, and we go to use them, and the thousand is now 3,000 or 4,000 and so on. The other thing is make sure that you've got cleaner, that you know you're going to change your surfaces and clean your bowling balls. Make sure you got a fresh set of cleaner and make sure that you have tape and any other um, items that you're going to use in the thumb or on your thumb. Um, you want to make sure that you purchase that before you go to Junior Gold because you're familiar with your pro shop. You have all of your tools. You have them in a location in your bag where you know they're ready to go. Um, and so that you're ready for anything. Probably the thing that most people are not prepared for at Junior Gold is how, how many people are actually there, and it can be a little bit chaotic between all the venues that you have to travel to um, and how many people are in the building. So with that said, you wanna make sure you know where your tools are and that whatever your process is, you don't have to run out and buy something when you're there because you forgot it or you lost it or you just, um, the tape that you have is no good anymore. So make sure you know where that is. And plus, if you're getting on an airplane, whatever those tools are, make sure you don't check those with you that you actually, or, or that you don't have those on because a lot of times liquids or other things, they may not allow you to have those on the plane if you have tools with you. Um, and then now all of a sudden you can't get on the airplane and now you, again, you have to go out and purchase something that may be not quite the same thing that you're used to, um, that you're used to either working out your bowling ball or actually working on your bowling ball. So, so let's now, let's talk a little bit about once you're there, you're going to practice session. There's a way to do practice session and, and your practice sessions are gonna be, they're gonna go really fast and short. And what I like to tell people is this, um, Try to bowl on the ends and in the middle because usually the end pairs don't get used very much and the middle pairs right in front of the desk 
are usually going to hook the most. Get familiar with the entire bowling center because you don't know where you're going to bowl and you don't know what the cross is going to be. Um, and, and pay attention if they have entrances on the side because if people are opening the doors, those pairs, usually the first two or three pairs towards the end, are either going to hook quite a bit more or they're going to be a little bit uh, tighter. Also pay attention to the temperature on the end because, again, that's going to uh, affect ball reaction. Usually if it's cooler, the lanes are going to tend to be a little bit tighter. The ball's going to go a little longer. And usually in front of the desk where all the open play go is usually the hookingest pairs or the highest friction pairs um, in the bowling center because that's usually where all the open play goes first. Also pay attention to the lane surface. Um, you know, if your tendency is to bowl on Brunswick surface or a pro anvil lane, uh, the ball is going to tend to go a little bit longer. If we bowl on an AMF center uh, or an HPL or an SPL type of surface, um, the, the lanes are going to tend to uh, read a little sooner. They're going to tend to hook a little bit more. Uh, so pay attention to that. Um, and also watch ball reaction. Um, so topography, as we know, plays a big key. Watch, um, watch the ball go down the lane, specifically outside the ball track. See if the gutter hooks. Um, inside the ball track, how much does that hook? And also left of the ball track. Do you tend to, um, when you throw balls inside uh, like the 20 board, um, does the ball tend to push or does it tend to hook a little bit early? And these are all things that you're going to do during practice session to see if, if in fact, as you're moving zones to transition, just kind of get familiar with what your ball is going to do. This general idea is going to help you, one, in the practice session, make sure that you choose the best five balls for you to accommodate all the lane conditions you're gonna see. And number two, it's going to give you a reasonable surface strategy that you can, um, again, so this is kind of a, an educated guess, but it's gonna allow you to put the right surface on the right ball for your style that's gonna help maximize um, your margin of error. Okay, so again, this is about doing research and it's all about matching up to the environment. Um, and then finally, I would say probably the, the thing that you need to do is get your mindset around um, how long of an event this is going to be um, and, and just soak it all in. It's, it's one heck of an experience to be able to go to Junior Gold and possibly represent your country on Team USA. It's another thing to uh, really enjoy the experience because a lot of you guys are going out with families and this is gonna be something um, that you guys can do together and remember the rest of your life. So have a great time. I hope some of these tips really help you. Um, if you need more information, certainly call the Kegel Training Center and we'll be happy to help you. But uh, you know what, we'll see you at Junior Gold and have a great summer.